In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most powerful adaptogens on the planet, if not the most. And this herb is also coincidentally one of my favorite herbs of all time, something I'm a huge fan of, something I've been consuming fairly regularly over the last seven years. So what we're going to do in this video is learn what is this herb, what is it all about, how is it the most powerful, most potent adaptogen, and what makes it particularly exciting and attractive to me. And then we'll talk about some of the benefits as well. So first, obviously, what is this herb that we're speaking of? Well, the herb that we're speaking of, I will actually show you. Instead of just telling you, I'll do you one better. I'll actually show it to you. So the herb here is called Gynostemma, or Jagulon, or Miracle Grass, or Magical Grass, depending on where you read it. So that's it there, and you can see it kind of looks like green tea. I'll get it up really close. Really, really, really close. Yep, that's it. Uh, and I just spilled it everywhere, all over my desk, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, what I just showed you there, that's um, what the actual herb is. And the parts that are used would be the leaves, and there's a little bit of the stem as well where it's picked off. Um, and again, it looks a bit like green tea. has a flavor similar to green tea. Slightly earthy, slightly bitter, slightly sweet. Totally delicious, totally <laughs> a great, like, welcomed flavor. So that's what gynostem is, as you just saw it. It's the leaves of the plant called Gynostemma pentaphyllum, which means sometimes it has five leaves, sometimes it has three leaves, sometimes it has seven leaves. So what you just had here is the seven leaf variety. There's lots of different varieties. Some are more bitter, some are more sweet, some are more medicinal, some are more just sweet and flavorful. So what, what I have here in the middle is really the best of both worlds. It's you know, has all of the adaptogenic amazing effects and tastes pretty darn good as well. So first let's go over five reasons why this is one of my favorite herbs and why it's just so exciting and attractive for me. Number one is it tastes great, <laughs> which is in the, in the herbal world when something tastes really good, that, that's a good thing. Now it tastes, you know, a lot like green tea, so it's a very familiar, um, relatable flavor to a lot of people. Um, like I said, it has a slightly bitter, slightly sweet, slightly earthy flavor. It's awesome. It's very, very good. Second, the thing that makes it very exciting to me is that it contains the highest concentrations of saponins of any herb ever discovered on the planet in human history. Now first, what does that mean? Well, a saponin is basically a chemical that is both oil and water soluble and it's contained within a lot of different adaptogens like ginseng or stragulus or reishi or goji or all these different things and it's partially um, responsible for the adaptogenic properties. So because it's oil and water soluble that makes it flexible within the body. Also it has a very similar chemical structure to um, hormones within our body. So it goes in and it's able to just fit in really easily and really effectively but without any sort of stimulation, meaning because it's an adaptogen, because it's so intelligent, it just always balances and fine tunes. So whereas Gynostemma has, you know, about 88 to 100 of these adaptogenic saponins, ginseng, astragalus, you know, the other really top adaptogens have like somewhere in the range of low 30 to like 38. So Gynostemma has like significantly higher qualities of these things, which is what makes it so intelligent and adaptable to so many different people. And the third reason is it has this rich concentration of potent chemicals, but it's pretty cheap and it's really easy to use, which is why for a long time it's been called, you know, ginseng at a tea price. And along with that is pretty much everyone knows how to steep tea. Pretty much anyone can take, you know, take this, drop it in some hot water, wait 10 minutes, and then drink it. You know, you don't have to learn how to make an elixir, you don't have to learn all these complex things, you don't have to, you know, necessarily take capsules. You can just say, oh, I don't know, okay, I'll drink some tea. And like, it's a very familiar, easy experience. So, that's another reason why I really like it, and it tastes good, and it's easy to use, and it's so potent. Amazing. So, fourth reason is that it is really powerful, it is a really potent herb, but it's so intelligent that it's very gentle, meaning it doesn't create extreme reactions in people, it's not stimulating, it's not depressing, it's just always balancing 
and always helping to restore homeostasis wherever the body's at. And this makes it really well tolerated for a lot of different people. And you know, there's some herbs that really work well for some people, some herbs that really work well for others, and vice versa. But gynostema seems to work really well across the board. So the fifth reason that it's really exciting and appealing to me is that it has over 30 years of pretty intensive scientific research to back it up. And if you, if you want to learn more, if you want to read more, go to Google Scholar, go to Pep, PubMed, type it in, type in gynostema and prepare to be blown away because there's a lot of amazing research, a lot of amazing things that this herb can do, which I won't touch on in this video because honestly, you would need a whole book to do so. So that's obviously not what we're doing here. I'm just giving you a good introduction, a good overview of this herb. So now let's talk about some of the, the specific benefits. Now that we see kind of what makes this herb different and even superior to many other herbs. The first thing is that it's a really powerful antioxidant and it helps to increase uh, the production of superoxide dismutase, which is the body's own uh, antioxidant or an endogenous antioxidant that the body uses to sort of keep down oxidative damage and keep down uh, inflammation. So gynostema helps to help helps our body produce that. Also, it helps to counteract the effects of nuclear factor kappa B, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically believed to be the substance that's the root of all inflammation and, um, and involved in most cell death in vertebrates, which is us, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully if you're watching this, you're a vertebrate um, or vertebrate depending on how you want to pronounce it. So because of that reason, many people in the longevity and anti-aging communities believe that keeping down nuclear uh, factor kappa B should be like number one goal of any sort of longevity or anti-aging program. So as we touched on before, gynostema is also the most powerful adaptogen. And you might be wondering, why are you saying the most powerful adaptogen? Who are you coming up with that? It's just kind of a tall claim. Well, I'm making that claim because it's scientifically proven to have the highest concentration of sapidins, which are the adaptogenic chemicals found within plants. So that's how it's the most powerful and the most potent or effective or whatever sort of adjective or adverb you want to throw on it. So first, we should probably understand a little bit more about um, what is an adaptogen. Well, first thing and the most unique thing about adaptogens is that they're dual directional or biphasic, meaning a lot of herbs, if you just take them, they just do one thing and that's it. And that's kind of their one trick, you know, or what, a really easy way to understand is, you know, people take, take a drink of coffee and regardless of whether they're already really jittery and fried or regardless of the way they're about to fall asleep, coffee just does what it does and it stimulates and opens things up. That's it, it doesn't say, hmm, you know, are you tired? Are you fatigued? Are you depressed? Are you stressed? Are you already in fight or flight? Are you about to fall asleep? It doesn't ask these questions, it just does what it does. Whereas adaptogens come in and say, hmm, you know, I realize that you just put me in your body, but you know, what's going on? Are you tired? Are you stressed? Are you depressed? Are you about to go to sleep? Are you about to work out? Are you about to work on a project? Or are you about to go sit and meditate? And it helps to adjust to and fine tune our metabolism in the, the sort of homeostasis in our body to that. So it's dual directional and biphasic and regulatory, not stimulating. And if you want to learn more about adaptogens, about gynostema in particular, uh, this herb is, or I'm sorry, this book is awesome. It's called Jiagulan, China's Immortality Herb by Michael Blumert and this uh, Chinese doctor, which I'm not gonna try to pronounce his name. Um, and as you can see, yeah, that's a chocolate stain. Um, so this book has definitely, it's definitely been read. It's had stuff spilled on it. Yeah, it's a good book. Second to that is Adaptogens. Herbs for Strength, Stamina, and Stress Relief by David Winston and Stephen Mames. Type it in on Amazon. It's an awesome book. It goes into really the scientific uh, ideas of how the herb will modulate our adrenal hypothalamus uh, pituitary axis, which controls our stress response. And basically, over time, these herbs fine-tune our stress response. So we handle stress more effectively, more easily. We can handle more stress as a result. So we have more energy, we have better balance, like hormonally, energetically, in our body, because of all of these different things. 
But again, check out those books if you want like the full download on you know what adaptogens are and how they work in a sort of biophysical point of view. Lastly, uh, gynostema is a immune regulator, immune modulator. Like reishi, like cordyceps, like gachaga, like many of the other great immune herbs, it's uh, just balancing and modulating to the immune system. Like I said, not stimulating, not depressing, just ask, hmm, over here you're stimulated, let's calm it down. Over here you're depressed, let's bring it up. And it just helps to seek and find and maintain balance and homeostasis. So that's just the tip of the iceberg for some of the benefits of gynostema. Um, like I said, if you want to learn more, check out the books I mentioned, check out Google Scholar, check out PubMed. I mean, the information's there. Um, and I just wanted to give you a good introduction and a good sort of uh, leeway into this amazing herb and let you know some of the reasons why it's really impactful and enjoyable for me. So if you have any questions or comments, post them below and I'll talk to you soon.